Um, your premise is that uh, to, 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 to bring capitalism, to bring a rebirth of capitalism in the society, that the moral argument uh, against altruism has to be made, be, uh, which, because the current altruistic type of arguments that conservatives make because of their underlying Christian ethic throughout the conservative movement uh, undercuts, undercuts the defense of capitalism. How do you account for the historical birth of capitalism in a, in a culture that was uh, Christian and altruist, altruistic uh, it, at that time? Uh, so that's part A of my question. Can and I what answer part A? I can't retain B, okay. B's <laughs> two questions. Um, that's, a, it, that's a great question. Um, so how do we explain the birth of capitalism um, from a society that was Christian, supposedly, and, and altruistic. It was a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so it's an accident of history. <laughs> no, it is, it is the fact that fundamentally, in, fun, in a fundamental sense, they weren't Christian and they weren't altruists. While they still advocated for elements of Christianity and elements of altruism, they weren't fundamentally either Christian or altruistic. That is, the Founding Fathers and, and the whole intellectual environment of the Enlightenment, and, and the Founding Fathers came out of the Enlightenment, they did not come out of Christianity, uh, was a secular society. It was a secular culture. It was called, what's the Enlightenment called? It's called the Age of Reason, not the Age of Faith, <laughs> the Age of Reason, to contrast it from what happened before, which was the Age of Faith, the Middle Ages. So it was the Age of Reason. It was of enormous respect for reason and for the individual, and for individual happiness, success, and success. So implicit, not explicit, but implicit, it was a, a self-interested, egoistic morality that drove the Founding Fathers. And, and you can see that in a Declaration of Independence. You have, you have a right to your own life, your own liberty, your own property, and in the most selfish political statement in the history of mankind, your own pursuit of happiness. Not the happiness of society, not the happiness of your group, not the happiness of your, of your religion, your personal happiness. So that does not come out of an, altru an altruistic perspective on life or on society. That requires implicitly a rational egoistic perspective. So they had reason. They had implicitly rational egoism. And unfortunately, reason was not fully defended. They still held on to elements of faith. They still, many of them were deists. Uh, some of them, uh, some funny fathers, well, not Christians, but most of them were deists. But there were still elements of faith. And rational egoism was only implicit. It wasn't explicit. So they were still impl explicitly altruists. And as a consequence, their system could not survive. That is, ultimately, there was no defense for self-interest. There was no defense for reason. As a consequence, there was no defense for the American Declaration of Independence and Constitution. So when elements far more consistent, consistently anti-reason and anti-self-interest came into this country and started to dominate the intellectual life of this country, there was no opposition to them. And as a consequence, we see a slow erosion of capitalism, you know, almost from day one of this country, but really accelerating after the 1890s.